Hello there. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. And I just wanted to say congratulations, first of all, on Falcon and Winter Soldier. Tremendous show. Oh, thank so. you. Thank you yeah, very much. Um, I thought I'd start out by just focusing in on the general production. So the action sequences, I th thought were absolutely phenomenal, especially those involving Sam taking to the skies. How did you shoot those stunning aerial battles? Uh, well, you know, we shoot a lot of it. Um, uh, he's is actually flying in a form. Um, we shoot a lot of the elements, uh, the helicopters, the people in the helicopters. Um, and so, you know, a lot of it is live. I mean, uh, a surprising amount of it. In terms of <clears throat> people jumping out of planes, we, I, I studied a lot of um, extreme, uh, extreme sport videos and, uh, you know, where they put the cameras and uh, the light cameras now with the GoPro versions of it, you can put them anywhere because I wanted it to have a very experiential quality. So the guys in the, in the squirrel suits, uh, you know, had cameras all over them yeah. and uh, they were really flying and we really uh, captured the moments that, that uh, you see. Um, and the same with Sam, we put cameras, you know, right here and um, all, all over. So that my, my goal was to not only feel like we were experiencing flying with them, but to make them so exciting that we, you know, we, um, the best of the flying that we could we could possibly uh, have. Oh, you know, outdo all flying done before. Brilliant. <laughs> that was it the worked. goal. <laughs> it worked. I absolutely love those scenes. Um, oh, that's so. great. Um, now, particularly in the finale, those action scenes, they really showed off all of Sam's, the capabilities of Sam's suit. Was there anything you had to cut from that at all? Any capabilities that you weren't able to show? No, no. We want what we wanted to do is um, make that the last sequences uh, a combination of his suit, and you'll notice his skills when he was working out with the, and you know doing the flips and and yes. all that. We wanted to bring to uh, this new cap stuff that we hadn't seen him do before, seen the cap do before, and with the shield, what it could do that was new and different. Uh, that we hadn't seen, um, you know, the, uh, the the Steve of it ever ever do. So there was a, a combination of an acrobatic kind of quality, uh, martial arts, um, as well as the shield having abilities um, within the vibranium of it that really was more skill set because the shield itself has not changed, but um, the skill set of Sam and what he could bring to it because he's not a super soldier, so he's not going to bring the he's not going to bring strength to it he's going to bring yes. a different kind of skill set brilliant um now focusing in on sam there one thing i absolutely loved was how much time we spent in sam's personal world and exploring his family backgrounds how did you design that environment and make that family dynamic work so well well you know um anthony is actually from louisiana so um setting it there uh gave us a lot to draw from. I mean, I don't know what, it was a bit of a happy accident, I suppose. Um, but also giving it a family legacy, a family, um, a family uh, homestead, a family history allowed us to tap into the, the um, African-American story and the yes. history of, of what that is. Um, and so, that you know, when he can't get a bank loan, even though his father was embedded in the in the community, all this is drawn from actual um, actual storylines, you know, actual yeah. truth. And so uh, it allowed us to play the history um, as much as we possibly could within his his personal storyline. Um, so that was, I think, why it feels so authentic, is because um, it truly is authentic. Uh, and of course, having a boat um, that we could fix up and that, you know, was a family legacy, uh, yeah. I think was also important. And, and as, as Sam says to his sister, I'm so glad you don't want to sell it. This is just something we have to get yeah. right. Yeah, that was a brilliant talk. I absolutely loved that element of the show. Um, now, one thing that everybody looks for in Marvel TV shows and movies, is there any comic book hint or Easter egg that hasn't been caught yet? <laughs> um, I think just look at Madripoor. 
OK, excellent. I'll be following that uh, that idea. Now, with the Flag Smashers, I thought they were a fascinating group because philosophically they had something of a point. You could see where they were coming from. So I've got to be honest that I was kind of hoping for a redemption arc for Carly. So I was absolutely devastated with how that ended. What made you decide to take that direction with, with her story? Well, because I think she's unredeemable at some level. You know, she's extreme. She's an extremist who he keeps reaching out to. He keeps reaching out to. Um, and she keeps making a choice that she can't come back from. And but in the moment, I think where her her redemption comes from. And, and by the way, he wouldn't have killed her. No. And Sharon no had way. killed her. And Sharon had ultimate, you know, ultimately um, heinous a heinous agenda, which he's not aware of. Um, and it's seemingly he, she took an opportunity. Sharon took an opportunity to kill because it did definitely look like she was going to pull the trigger you know right. that that um carly was going to make yet another terrible choice so you know that w walks a line of was she going to or would he have gotten through to her um so i think the slight moment of redemption that she gets before she dies is when she says i'm sorry right and so he was right and she was right she's right in her cause not in how she did it. She became radicalized and that became toxic. He was right to believe in her. That in the very end moment, she did see that she was wrong and she paid for the, it with the highest price, which was her life. And maybe therefore killed, you know, not just her, but killed the movement. So it's now up to him to carry the torch of the right movement. So, which is what he does. He picks it up and he, talks to the you know and says senator you've got to do better and you've got all you know says to all the the um grc you've um uh got the power to do to move borders to do all the things that she was asking now what are you going to do with that power because yeah. what she was asking for was legitimate but how she did it wasn't so you know i think you know in a way that's him taking on the the Truth of what she wanted, which of course is reflective of our communities, refugees, imperialism, all, all the things that we are facing right now. So Absolutely. what are we going to do with that? What's the moral imperative? What, what do we have? Where do we sit with all that as, as a community, a worldwide community? Yeah. So one final question here. Knowing the reactions to the series with the benefit of hindsight, is there anything you think you could have changed or done more or less of? Oh, that's a loaded question because um, <laughs> I come to the place where, you know, listen, there's always things um, that are different, that it, 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 scenes are different, everything's different. So I've come to a place where I embrace where we have ended up as being where we needed to be. And so uh, I, I can honestly say I have no regrets on, on where we have, where it's uh, the show that we made. And where it has landed, it is. I yeah, think yeah. a. Um, I think it, all the themes that I wanted to touch on, all the performances I wanted to to get, we got. Did we get them the exact way I thought we would? Not always, but that doesn't mean I regret where we ended up. In fact, I would say it's absolutely a lot better than I could have possibly imagined. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for the interview today, and that. To me, that ends it on a really good note. So again, uh, thank great. you for all the work you put in with this show. Really thank you. It. Thank you for noticing.